Good afternoon. I'm so glad you can join us today. I'm Sharon Spurlock, the Senior Director of Family Education at the St. Louis Arc, and we've got two wonderful guests today to talk to us about voting, uh, voter accessibility, uh, ballot initiatives, all the kind of cool stuff that you need to know every time you're going to go out and let your voice be heard. Let's uh, begin with introductions from our guest, Anna and Hannah. Uh, why don't we start off with you, Hannah, explain your role at the ARC and uh, anything else you think is important for us to know. And then you can pass to Anna. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Hannah Satterwhite. I am an individual and advocacy navigator on the family supports team at St. Louis ARC. And so I do a little bit of family navigation um, at the ARC, and I also uh, do anything related to advocacy engagement at the ARC. Um, I help with a self-advocates group that meets on Thursdays where we discuss voting, among many other things related to policy and advocacy on state and local levels and federal and beyond. So, yeah, Anna. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Anna Montano, and I'm a advocate here in the New area and I also work for memory development and ability for our community coordinator. Thank you. It's so nice to have both of you here today. I think the easiest way for us to start off is for you to share some broad information. As uh, Hannah and Anna are sharing a PowerPoint, please just use that chat or Q&A to share any questions that you have as we go along. Thank you, Sharon. So this is a PowerPoint that we have prepared for you today. We'll go over some basic information about how to vote in the state of Missouri, specifically um, accessibility items related to voting um, and how to make your voice heard. And this is being recorded, recorded in August of 2024. And we just recently had a primary election and we're looking forward to voting again in November. So um, this will be kind of in preparation for that election. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to be prepared for that election specifically. Um, that election will have, um, you know, we'll be voting for president. That's a big one. So the, on the federal side of things, all the way down to um, Missouri lo and local level policies and um, and legislators. So a lot of things to look forward to there. All right. So here are some important dates to keep in mind. Um, if you're voting absentee, that starts the sixth Tuesday prior to the election. So you can do that any week leading up to the election. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that um, a little later on in the slides. October 9th, 2024 is the deadline to register to vote in the state of Missouri. So if you're not currently registered or if you need to check your registration status to make sure that you are registered, um, doing so before October 9th is is the way to the way to go. Um, and that would be the registration for mail and online and, and all other forms in person registration. So it has to be in by October 9th. If you're registered by October 9th, then you can vote in the November 5th, 2024 election. And you can also vote leading up to that date. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, what do you do if to prepare for voting? Uh, the first thing would be to check your eligibility for voting. Um, you have to be 18 in order to vote, but you can be, I believe, 17 and a half by the time of registration. There are other qualifications. You have to be a citizen. Um, and also we will go into this a little bit more in depth in another slide, but your guardianship status does affect whether or not you are able to vote. So we'll talk a lot about that. Um, but that would be something to know is, are you eligible to register to vote? Um, then you can look up your voter registration online to make sure that you are actually registered. If you haven't voted in a while, but you think you're registered and you're not quite sure, or if you've had a change of address, it's really important just to check to make sure all of those things are up to date. So we'll share some links for how to do that online as well. 
You can also find a sample ballot online when it gets closer to the election date. I wasn't able to find one quite yet in August, um, but that will be coming soon. Um, and so you'll be able to look through the sample ballot and then look up the candidates and issues that are on the ballot. You can talk to people you trust about what you, you know, if you have any questions that you feel like you need a little bit of help working through um, and just kind of look into who are these candidates and what are the issues that you are about to vote on. And then it's important to make a plan to get there. So what type of method will you use to cast your ballot? Are you going to use an accessible voting machine or curbside voting? Or are you going to go with a friend or a staff member or a family member? Um, how will you get there? Will you get a, will you be able to get a ride there? Um, will you take public transportation? Will you bring someone to support you? Those are all great questions to think about beforehand. You can make a plan to go with a friend or with a group as well. This is just a note that voters in St. Louis City and County may vote at any polling place. I am not sure about other counties, but I know this is not Missouri-wide. Each county has different rules. So if you do live in the St. Louis area, St. Louis City and County, you can choose your polling place based on what works for you. This is just a reminder of acceptable forms of ID for voting because you do have to have your ID with you when you go and vote. Um, it's important that these are non-expired. So a non-expired Missouri driver or non-driver license, you don't have to be a driver, but typically if you aren't a driver, maybe you'll have a state ID, a non-expired military ID, veterans ID card, U.S. passport, or another photo ID issued by the U.S., or the state of Missouri, which is either not expired or expired after the date of the most recent general election. So if it's expiring soon, but it is not expired yet. Accessible voting. And I'll go through these briefly. And then I would love to hear from Anna um, with her experience in this area. But um, so there are a few different types of accessible voting options, depending on what you need. Curbside voting, if you have limited mobility, you are eligible to vote curbside outside of your polling place. So if you arrive at the polling place and typically there are people outside, if you can ask someone to ask a poll worker to bring a ballot out to you, or if you come with someone. So if someone is driving you and they can safely park and go in and ask for one, then a poll worker can bring you out a ballot. They will have you sign something to make sure you're still you. They'll run your ID just like they do with everyone else, and they'll bring the ballot out to you in the car. Um, if you have physical disabilities and you're and for some reason your polling place is not accessible as it should be, you can request a different polling place. Um, and again, in St. Louis City or County, you can choose your polling place. But uh, for other counties, they may be assigned one polling place. So um, contacting your election authority will be the most helpful option to make a request. Um, and there's a phone number, 800-NOW-VOTE is the phone number that can be used to find your local election authority. And every polling place must have an accessible voting system for individuals with disabilities. So, these systems include an audio ballot to make sure um, you can hear your selections or the ability to enlarge text to read the on-screen ballot. And we'll have Anna talk in a minute about what she's experienced with accessible voting. You can also request to be a permanent absentee voter. So if you have a physical disability or a disability, that means that you really will not be going to vote in person at all, or it's difficult for you to do so, you can request to be placed on a designated list so that you are automatically mailed an absentee ballot. Um, and so that will also be with your local election authority. So I want to really quick, while we have this open, turn it to Anna. And Anna, if you have any insight or any stories you can tell about your accessible voting experience, I'm sure people would love to hear that. All right. So for those of you who may not know, I 
I have an ability and I use a real hair and during the re- primary, I decided to have my mom drive me to my uh, local polling place because I wanted to vote inside and in person because that what I prefer um, when I arrived at the point play, I obviously knew I needed an acceptable voting machine because hearing in the tiny bubble was not going to be possible with my high motor hill. So I went up to the pool. Uh, they had a table with about four point one. And I went up to one, up to them, and I asked for an acceptable voting machine, um, taking note that they did indeed have one Unimi machine next to um Plano. It looked like a mini uh travel who hey type type machine. I don't really know how I do to the habit, so I knew they had one, so I went up and I asked, and they, obviously, they, they were asking, they, I would probably be the one to ever ask for it, uh, maybe ever, or maybe only on that day. Um, they ran my ID, and then they had to print out what appeared they he wore, Code that they were willing to enter in the machine. Uh, what they hinted out what I was asking for, they had a poll worker mo and had it up for me. It probably took him about 10 minutes, but honestly, I was willing to wait because voting is very important and everybody can wait. <laughs> it may Make the time to wait is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, what I what I made it over to that machine. The one thing that I did realize is that it is at a very high table. Um, that is not real hair height. So when I asked the provoker to please help me we they told me that they were unable to do that for a reason I do not know. They didn't have a reason. Um, to me, I was with my mom, and he was able to hold my back up so that I could read it without having to lean up. But if you want somebody in a wheelchair that might lean back, I recommend you know, bringing a pillow from home with you or uh, bringing a support worker, a family member, or a hand. But what my mom helped me support my back so I can read the machine, I was able to vote completely independently. Oh, That's yeah, that was kind of my experience. Yeah, and I appreciate that you talk about how it wasn't exactly perfect. You know, it wasn't exactly um, without a couple little bumps, but you were able to stick it out and get what you needed from that experience. Um, and that's a good, great time to bring up that, one, you can bring a person with you. Um, you can bring a family member, a friend, a staff, somebody who you know. Uh, to support you in voting. And you can also uh, stick around and wait and make sure you get the help that you need. Even if, you know, say you're in line and you get in line before the polls close, then you should just stay in line no matter what. Um, Make sure that you get what you need so that you can vote. So we have quite a few questions. Would you guys be open to feeling those before you go on? Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Great. Um, what are the available options for people to help plan transportation in advance? Transportation is such a problem for so many people. If you don't have reliable transportation, how do you start planning for that? Um, I want to put that out there now that we're talking about that. I know that sometimes Uber and this or he transportation into voting place on a mission day. Great uh, suggestion. Yes. And I would also um, suggest looking into if you're concerned about what day you might be able to vote, I would look into early voting. Um, it could you could do absentee early voting. You can choose your day and you can do absentee in person. So say, um, you know, if you have a disability that means that you have a hard time finding transportation and you are concerned about that, um, you could request an absentee ballot and vote in person if you want to absentee um, leading up to that election. So you can kind of pick your day. You'd have about six weeks to, to choose your day. But I agree with Anna. I think looking into some of those free initiatives to get voters out and to get voters rides um, would be really great. I lied. I'm going to ask one more question. You talked about how you don't have to go to the polling place on your voter ID. Do you have to notify them in advance that you plan to go to another one or can you just waltz into whatever happens to be convenient on that day? In the city of St. Louis and the county of St. Louis, you can just show up at any location. Okay, thank you. And you don't you don't have to inform them. Thank you. Those are great questions. As of 2018, um, guardianship is, I guess, the, the way that they're laid out is a little bit different. So if your guardianship um, agreement was appointed after 2018, you could have potentially had some rights carved out during when, when the uh, uh, guardianship was appointed. They could have carved out the right to vote, marry, or drive. So... It's important that you understand specifically what it says um, in yours. You can check with your guardian or you can check with the judge or on Missouri CaseNet to find out if you have voting carved out, which means you retain the right to vote. So that would be something to look into before that date. If you do have a full guardianship with no voting rights carved out, then you would be in ineligible to vote unless you got that right restored. So there, there are a couple of tips on here about how to get that right restored. I really can't tell you how long this might take, um, but it is possible to get some rights restored. Um, you can ask for letters of support from doctors, professionals that you know. Anyone can send a letter on your behalf saying we think this person should retain the right to vote. Those letters can go directly to the probate judge. Um, you can tell your guardian you want the right to vote. Your guardian may be able to help the process along. If they agree that this would be something that they they would see you doing. Um, and so if you, if you need help to regain the right to vote, you can contact an attorney as well. And we do have a few places that you can contact in the state of Missouri that could potentially help with that. Missouri Protection and Advocacy is one of them. Um, and, and the phone number is here, but there's also information at the end of the slide. So short answer, if you have full guardianship without those rights carved out, then you are unable to vote. But that doesn't mean that's forever. If you really want to vote, um, you can start working on this process of checking with your guardian, checking with the judge, and seeing what can be done about that. So I hope that answers people's questions. I know it's a huge topic, but you can always reach out to us for more information too. And I put a link at the very end with um, a really nice, more detailed document than this one that has a little bit more information. All right, Anna, do you want to go into this one if you have an issue on voting day? Yeah. So if you arrive at a poor on voting day and they tell you that um, her man member a voting machine and it working or, um, or they don't know what it is 
where they can't help you from reading. There is a hotline that you can um, call or tell on the election day that has attorneys ready to help you with any issue on the other end. The phone line and that number is 8 to all vote and an attorney will be able to talk to you, hear what the issue is, and possibly even talk to the poor worker with you there if that means you need help doing. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, mm-hmm. so definitely don't give up if you experience an issue. Don't give up. Stay there and use these resources. Write down these numbers ahead of time in case you need them. They also do have numbers um, in in languages other than English. So we have listed them as well in case you do need translation services. So Anna and Hannah, go back one slide. Mm -hmm. Um, The question I think is important to answer right now, and you started to say it, I think, if you call this number, is this person going to address the issue on the spot so that you hopefully can vote? Or are they just collecting information about failures? Um, They will address the issue on the spot. Fantastic. So um, there are a couple of upcoming events that just wanted to highlight. One is on Zoom. This is a League of Women Voters sponsored event on September 21st, 9 a.m. on Zoom. That's a Saturday. And the webinar is going to focus specifically on general Missouri voting info and disability. So any information pertinent to those with disabilities who are voting in the state of Missouri, it's a statewide Zoom call. So I assume that There won't be a ton of local information on it, but a lot about the general election. Um, They'll have an ASL interpreter, they'll have captions, and you can specify accommodations in the registration. But, you know, if you happen to be nearby some paper and you want to write down this phone number, there's also a phone number here you can contact or an email you can contact if you have specific information or questions for Barbara um, or for the League of Women Voters. But this is specifically a webinar that is designed for voters with disabilities. Um, They hope to have time for plain language descriptions of the ballot measures, which I think will be really, really cool um, if we're able to, to fit that in. So that's an event on Saturday, September 21st. And then we also have one here locally in the St. Louis area. Dance the Vote is a really fun event. St. Louis Arc will be there. We'll have some self-advocates there and we'll have a booth um, where you can come and stop by and say hi to us and talk about advocacy and voting. Um, Dance the Vote has family events. They have performances. They have speakers and you can register to vote while you're there if you would like to register in person with someone. That's Saturday, September 14th, starting at 10 a.m., but it goes into the afternoon. Um, and that's a free event and there's a website there you can check out for more information. Um, so there's a lot of information on the secretary of state's webpage. That's the official voting information for the state of Missouri. You know, I would highly recommend going there for your basic information. They have a page about how to vote, um, with details about accessible voting, They have a link to register to vote if you'd like to register by yourself or with someone at home um, using that link. They have listed the 2024 ballot measures. So those are the measures that we are voting on. We get to vote on in the state of Missouri. You can request an absentee ballot via that website. Um, You can also check your voter registration to make sure you are registered. The MoDDC, which is where Anna works, they have amazing videos about how to use the accessible voting machines. And you can click on your county specifically and be shown information by county. So I would highly recommend checking out that website. Um, The ARC of the U.S. has a really nice plain language voter guide. The ARC of the U.S. is a national um, org. It is the ARC. Um, The St. Louis ARC is a smaller statewide chapter of the ARC. 
Um, and they have a really excellent resource, which is a whole guide about voting. It talks about why it's important to vote, how to vote. It is not specific to Missouri and not specific to St. Louis, but um, I highly recommend if someone in your life or you is looking for a clear and easy to understand guide about voting, um, it's very helpful. And then there are a few other resources here. Rev Up has some links for ways to get out your vote as a person with a disability um, and, and links to other websites where you can find out specifics about your, your area. Uh, the voting, voting and guardianship resource is from Mo Wings. It is a longer version of what I shared on uh, the guardianship slide. And then the League of Women Voters has a lot of great information specific to St. Louis for voters with disabilities. So those are a few links that I highly recommend checking out if you're looking for more information. And if you need assistance finding out if you're registered to vote or if you have a specific question that's maybe private and you don't wanna ask it on the Zoom webinar format, you can email advocacy at slark.org and we'd be happy to talk you through if you have you know, a specific need. And that is the end of the PowerPoint. Are there other questions that came through? Well, there's a question that says poll workers have requirements about what they can wear to the polls. Are there any requirements about what you can wear as a voter? I think you can wear whatever you want as a voter. Um, that is my impression. Does anybody know anything different? <laughs> I would think it would be a civil liberties issue if you were not allowed to vote and because you walked in and something that the poll workers didn't feel was appropriate. So I'm going to go with you. Cool. Um, I wanted to know, I know in the past there was a lot of hubbub about paying for an ID so that you could have a proper ID for voting. Are there options for people to get reimbursed if they have to go get a Missouri ID or are there other ways that they can get the ID they need to vote? There are a couple places in St. Louis that will assist with getting, um, getting an ID. There's one actually located at SLU, an event that they do regularly where people can show up and get get the, the money that they need to get an ID. Mm -hmm. um, I will say it's, it's crowded. It's first come, first serve, and you'll have to wait in line and be there at a specific time and, and maybe wait quite a long time. Uh, but if that is, if the money is not available to you to get your ID updated, um, we can absolutely send some information about how you can. Okay. One of our guests says that they were able to use a, a college school ID because the school was local. So, you know, check again those websites and ask the questions of those officials because they'll really be able to be to confirm for you what you need. I just want to confirm a couple of things that came up in the chat. One is you absolutely do not need to be a woman to be participating in League of Women Voter Activities. It's a universal organization. They would really want people particularly people with disabilities to come to that event on September 21st. And I think if you, if your language isn't covered in those emergency phone numbers, I think preparing in advance, maybe talking to your commit community and finding out what kind of emergency resources they have in place. I think that they've tried to cover a really broad swath of people with those four hotlines, but obviously they they're going to miss somebody. So um, those are opportunities that are out there. Um, and then my last comment is, is that I just think it's so wonderful that we have voting organizations, nonpartisan voting organizations that help us to understand what we're voting on and what what the pop pros are, what the cons are, you know, what position our uh, individual candidates take on those positions. Can you just talk a little bit more about plain language ballots and resources where, like, I know we'll send some resources out, but if there's any resource you want to highlight, I think it's difficult for the average American to understand anything on a ballot. So I'm very interested in that. Certainly it is. Um, yeah, I would definitely check out um, MoDDC, 
um, League of Women Voters for voting resources like that. Um, I would look at a sample ballot ahead of time and work with those that you trust to understand what the ballot initiatives mean. Um, I would highly recommend attending that webinar for League of Women Voters. If they do get a chance to go over the plain language ballot measures, I think that will be very valuable. Um, you know, and and they are nonpartisan. So they're not going to say, we think you should vote for this candidate. They're going to just explain what is meant. Um, and those ballot initiatives get so wordy and confusing. So it's always, you know, I I try to look at those well in advance because it throws me off when I'm seeing them for the first time when I'm sitting there um, at the ballot. So definitely like to look at things ahead of time. Um, one uh, resource that I use when I am looking up a new candidate that I don't know much about is I use Ballotpedia. Um, it's just a website that it's, you know, ends in PDF because it's kind of like Wikipedia, but you can look up your candidate and often it says where they stand on certain issues, which is pretty helpful. Yeah. Um, you can you can compare and contrast the people who are running for the same office and that can be kind of pretty helpful. They're um, gonna represent you. So that's a great yep. way to go about it. Anna, exactly. anything you wanna add before we wrap up? Um, no, I think that's it, thank you. Thank uh, both of you. I think the audience really enjoyed all the, the great information you brought today. Uh, and I hope we see you at a future event. We um, also will keep you informed again through our newsletters about information that we get that we can pass on to you. Thanks for coming tonight.